Wrestling fans, and welcome to another edition of Oh God, my shoulder! I always, I always point <laughs> up for some reason when I do this. And I How are you injuring my... yourself during the intro? You worse than Kevin Nash. <laughs> uh, hello and welcome to the Supla. I am Andy Quad, and with me as always is Carmine Antonelli. Yeah, the one who's not injuring himself. I just doing physical myself. activity during a podcast. I just injured my arm. What did you do? I just pointed upwards. What the fuck? I always do that. That's a thing. I just go, hello, and point upwards for some reason. If that reason, happens to you on a podcast, I'd like to see you just get body slammed. I would, <laughs> I would die. I would literally die. If, if I ever got in the ring and someone was like, I'll pay you a grand if you, like, I don't know, a big E Langston run in front of you like a fucking train. I'll <laughs> be like, well, I will die, so no. And obviously, we have a third guest with us today, Keelan Balderson. Good evening. Um, we're continuing the new era of the Supla with multiple guests. We were going to have Brooks back this week, but uh, last minute he had to do something. Uh, however, Where I do want Glenn? to. I do, where is Glenn? Yeah. He's typically working on a Wednesday, so. Boo. Which is when we record this. We're going to go behind the scenes a little bit. We record on Wednesdays. So if we ever record on a Thursday, then Glenn could show up. But typically, normally, he will not be able to make it, unfortunately. Uh, however, there is something I wanted to bring up to you guys. Go, uh, go, go. I have not mentioned this in our Facebook chat. I have not mentioned this anywhere else. I'm bringing it up here swerve, first. Swerve. To finalize this transition into the new era of the Supla... Yeah. I think we need to make a very specific change. And it's one of the only real rules I think we're going to ever apply uh, in this new regime. I propose that we ban the mentioning of Liam Dunn for the remainder of this podcast history. It, it, it's not so much that the fans have to stop talking about him because there's no way we can control that. However, have you noticed his name has stopped showing up in the comments section? It's that I think we should stop bringing him up. I, I don't know whose show this is. I'm just here. I don't know if I can even make that decision. Well, no. The thing is, it's not any one of our shows. It's not Andy's show. It's not my show. It's not your show. It's our show. The Supla doesn't belong to one person. And I mean, that's it's a the cooperative thing. movement. Uh, uh, Liam assumed it was his show at all points. Even shows he wasn't on, like the Let's Play or Total Divas Review, those were all his show. He owned them. Now that he's gone, all we've been doing, pretty much every video that's gone up on our channel since he left, has mentioned him at least once. It's not... I, we're basically going to Benoit him, I think, because it's not good to keep talking about him when he ditched the product and basically said fuck you to all of us so does, I think that, does this nice... mean when when he returns he's going to get 20 tribute shows he's not returning yeah sure That's the point. yeah okay now liam's coming back that's yeah hopefully not uh but yeah i think we should stop talking about him just make make it all in the past like nancy grace let's just not give him any credibility exactly oh i've got a news story here about nancy grace oh well that gets deleted <laughs> it's all right because the news story has changed anyway oh well that's good then she's not even doing what she was gonna do oh well so fuck you speaking of people that shouldn't be doing anything ever guess who's back 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 again 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 russo's back 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 Tell a friend, friend, friend. Guess who's back? Guess who's back? Guess who's back? All right. Who's back. All right. Back. All right. All right. <laughs> so uh, Vince Russo is working part time for TNA. PWInsider.com is reporting that Vince Russo is officially back working for TNA as a consultant for creative. His job is essentially to pitch ideas and to give advice from home. The in house creative team consists of former WWE employees John Gabrick and Dave McGarner, <laughs> as well as Matt Conroy. <laughs> Christy Hemming is working... What? I went stupid there. Christy Hemming Did you just have is a working... stroke? <laughs> Specific... No, I'm not having a stroke. Christy Hemming is working... Wow, I think I am. Specifically! 
think I am. The word is specifically. <laughs> the knockout. Uh, one of the many criticisms of Vince Russo is that when he's in full control of the strips, he always gets burnt out. But generally, he has some good ideas. However, consider, considering he's never significantly moved the needle of teenage ratings, one has to wonder why don't they just go in a completely new direction? Because every time they try a new direction, it turns out to be the wrong direction. Everything they do fails. So they're going back to the first idea. Yeah, it's and clear. It works they just have no idea what to do. So they're like, oh shit, who, who does know what to do? Uh... Uh, let's call Russo. It just doesn't seem like they have any concept of where they want to be, who they want to be. Oh, let's just copy WWE 50,000 times. Oh, God, have you seen that picture? Like, there's a picture of, like, Brian and Eric Young, AJ Styles leaving the company, and Punk leaving the company. Like, it's just that the comparisons are just... They are everything they've done for the past year, two years. They've just copied WWE. They have yeah. no original train of fucking thought. They have nothing. They it's just down to the point where copy what WWE do. They got rid of the six-sided ring, put a fucking four-sided one like WWE for Christ's sake. They tried fucking everything to copy WWE, and they're the shitter version because everyone realizes that they're ripping them off. I mean, hell, even the Dixie storyline, like, that's the authority storyline. Yeah, she's, she said everything but best for business. It just hurts my head how they can do this. And it makes sense with Russo back. Why was there a tables match on the fucking Impact show when they're having a tables match at the pay-per-view? I, I feel so bad. And Monsters Ball as well on yeah, TV. I feel so bad for... Abyss and Eric, it's like, oh, let's jump in some tax with 12 people watching me. Like, <laughs> mm. if at least mm. if you're gonna go that extreme and put your body through that much torture, at least wait until you've popped an audience and you've, you know, it's a pay per view and it's been built up to not just a random impact where there's no one even in the audience. <laughs> I swear, this is the second Monsters Ball match they've had on free TV. They did one in England for a laugh. Well, they've been having table matches and confrontations every week. It's just insane. So dumb. It's just so dumb. It, this is... Just fucking die already. Just go away. Stop hiring people because TNA has signed a former WWE executive, Doug Lebo. TNA has yet signed another former WWE executive in Doug Lebo, who was the company's vice president of reality, promotions, and special projects. In TNA, he will be involved in production and possibly replacing Eric Bischoff. Who is I don't this, know who guy? this guy? Is. Stop, war- Stop fucking bringing in yeah. ex-WWE people. For fuck's sake. I don't know. What do they expect to achieve from hiring people that WWE got rid of? Yeah, like, they are rejects. These are WWE rejects. They obviously weren't good enough. Why are you bringing them in? And this guy, Big John, that's his nickname. He's basically the head of everything, more or less, in TNA now. Head of creative, head of... And, like, when he was in WWE, he was only doing talent relations. Now he's just, <laughs> oh, you were in WWE, so run our company, please. Because we don't know how to do it. That's like giving, like, someone who fucking puts up the stage creative. <laughs> he, he was the guy that was on Tough Enough. Making sure they settled in well and things like that. <laughs> say, just fucking stop. And like, like this guy has gone on Twitter to be like, "Oh, we fucking signed Robbie E and Rockstar Spud to multi-year contracts because he's announced on Twitter that this bro has a new deal. Happy to announce that at Robbie E Impact has signed a multi-year contract with TNA." He also goes on with another tweet to congratulate. Rockstar spot on his multi-year contract. Oh, hooray! Hooray! It's like saying, we're not a shit, guys. We, we, we're signing people. We're not releasing everyone, guys. No, please, please keep watching. No, it's please. basically all the guys that are happy to accept really shit pay. And everybody else leaves. Yeah. Like, I'm waiting for the day Samoa Joe leaves. Yeah, apparently... Um, 
Bad Influence have gone. Chris Saban has now gone. <sighs> oh my God. AJ Styles is obviously gone. Um, Kurt Angle's contract was up in September and he says he wants to retire with WWE. Um, uh, oh my God. They don't have anyone. They don't have anyone. They don't have anyone. They they, don't. Their roster's they've painful. Got, they've got they Eric Young. The... They don't have anybody. <laughs> they just don't. When did Eric Young become like their Daniel Bryan like the longest the, the last thing I remember from Derek or from Eric Young was that he fucking was half of the knockouts tag team champions he hadn't won a match in fucking three years and he won the world title what the fuck in this TNA's is- mind Eric Young is Mick Foley he's their lovable kind of underdog that's never quite made it but it's been there since the start and everybody loves him and they thought that when he got the belt, all the TNA fans that have been there since the start would be like, oh my god, Eric Young's finally got it. But nobody cares because TNA is not over as a company. It doesn't yeah. matter whether he's been there since the start. <laughs> nobody cares to begin with. It's like, no one cares about anything this company does. Because you know what it is? They just want a press... Because he has another TV show, like some animal fishing program... They can write a press release and they think a few extra people are going to see it because he's got some exposure somewhere else. Nobody cares about your shitty press release. No one's reading it. <laughs> yeah. I don't I don't know what the fuck they're thinking. I don't know what their logic is. And it's like they're trying to push new people. And I've said this a million times. They got rid of all the people who were over so like they can't fucking beat them. So if you're trying to, like, I don't know... St- do a clean slate. Why give it to the guy that's been there forever? The only reason I can possibly think of is Eric Young was like, fuck this, I'd probably make more money doing this fishing program than staying, <laughs> slamming myself into tax for no fucking reason and slamming myself through bar wire boards for no fucking reason. Because no one's watching this shit. It's just like, oh no, 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 we'll give you the belt. Are you sure? Because I haven't won anything. On My cat hasn't won anything in three years. Are you sure you're going to put the world heavyweight fucking tie on me? Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll do that. What? The reason Brian worked so well is because he's over. He's insanely over. But there's no, there's almost no one in TNA who's over. Yeah, and all the people that are over, Kurt Angle, Bobby Roode... There's a, there's, a, there's a good handful of people that you, you if you're going to make the best of a worse situation, you think, well, we've got Kurt Angle, we've got Jeff Hardy, even though he's going through his, you know, artistic phase you where he wants to be I'm Willow. I'm Jeff Hardy, but I'm <laughs> Willow. <laughs> but you've got all these guys that they could put the belt on, and there is some credibility, and they just don't. Like, just put it on Kurt Angle for a few months. He's the... He's Kurt Angle. On the belt on Kurt! But <laughs> we'll stick it on Eric Young instead! So did Will... Hold on a second. Did Willow become a ghost? I'm not sure. You know, I, I completely forgot what Willow's, Willow's voice is like. Shit. <laughs> you think you're going... There we go. Done it. <laughs> there it is. There we go. You think... We... You think Magnus is your champion? No! It's Eric. It's <laughs> like, no... Oh god, but like Garrett the fucking carrot. I mean, what the fuck are they gonna do next? Th- yeah, really. I wouldn't be surprised if Garrett became the next champion at this rate, because okay. like you have a couple people who are over, like Bobby Roode, maybe Austin Aries, but no, Eric Young, because he looks like Daniel Bryan. That's god, that works. I don't understand. It's so stupid. Well, I don't care anymore. I've had enough. So we must talk about something that's quite sad. Because Daniel Bryan's current schedule will see him return on Monday, ahead of this Extreme Rules. However, he's been pulled from the house show loop so that he can spend time uh, grieving with his family. Um, and the attack by Kane on Raw was used as a way to give him a short break. Uh, as you may or may not know, Bryan's father sadly passed away whilst he was on his honeymoon with Brie Bella. Yeah. Uh, but shitty timing, really. Yeah. Uh, he, he just became champion. And JR said something interesting recently that um, makes sense. It's that Brian's character, even as champion, will always be the underdog in like 99% of his matches. 
So, I mean, it, it, it works on a storyline level that he has to get written out for a few weeks so that he can do this. But it sucks for his title reign. Yeah. But like, I mean, like, I can't sucks. imagine Brian being like this guy who's a really effective champion, like a dominant champion. I can't imagine it because he spent this whole fucking time getting fucked over left, right, and center. I can't imagine him being good. <laughs> like, I, I just can't. Not well, good, no, I think it has the potential to be a good title reign, but more along the lines of a Mick Foley title reign than a Steve Austin one. Yeah. Like, he'll be the underdog in any match he goes into, but, you know, he'll still find a way to win. That's the thing. And the people will always be behind him and all that. It's like when he won the World Heavyweight title. He was the underdog in all his matches, but he still came out of a triple threat cage match with Big Show and Mark Henry as champion, so... Oh, yeah. And he won the Elimination Chamber and all that shit, so... Well, yeah, that's true. I just hope he doesn't become the the mid-card world champion like CM Punk. Yeah, that's the one thing I'm worried about. I don't think he will at this point. Because I don't see what would main event ahead of him other than maybe Evolution and The Shield. Mm-hmm. But... God's sake... At least just well, give him one damn belt already, for God's sake. Yeah, he's... Lugging it around, he's, he's not the biggest guy in the world to just having to keep <laughs> going, ugh, ugh. It's like a workout when you come into the ring. Yeah. What is the point in having two belts now? I think they're just waiting for the network logo to become the logo, then they can remake the W belt, but with the new W... I don't like that logo. I don't like the idea of it becoming the logo for everything. The network's one thing, but not everything. It's just, yeah, I don't know. I don't like it. I just, I have always hated the fucking WWE logo because it says WW. It says WW. <laughs> what the fuck is that about? Like, it does, it's WWE. No, it's not. It's WW. That's like, <laughs> that's like FIFA just calling itself Fifth. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> it's like the NFL just calling it Nuffle. Like, what is that about? Uh, I don't know, but the, the new logo is not going to fix M- that. I mean, what? Dumb. It's, I don't know. Oh, well. I, never mind. So, yeah. moving on. AJ Lee is off uh, until the European tour. AJ Lee is not advertised for any dates until the European tour in mid-May. It would appear that she was granted some time off. Although there are no reports of any injuries. Well, I'm not surprised, honestly. It's like it's like what happened with CM Punk after his huge title reign. It's like she's been doing this for over almost 300 days straight. And she's probably tired. So she got a little time off. And also if she's just got engaged, I think they would want to spend time. Maybe um, she's a, a bargaining chip for CM Punk. Like, oh, we'll give you your girlfriend back as long as you come back to us. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give your fiance back. Please come back. No, I I'd rather be here with AJ. Thanks, you idiots. Uh, I'm a bit like... disappointed. We've got to wait for a proper match between Paige and AJ, though. That actually, you know, lasts. True, but a few I think minutes. I think if they, I think it's probably better this way because if they give Paige some time to fight some people on the roster and establish herself as a good champion. Then when Paige or when AJ comes back and wants a rematch, it'll be a little more like important. Then you could do it for like SummerSlam or something, and then it'd be epic and shit. I'm yeah. de- I'm definitely impressed though. I mean, she had a match with Exana, and I've never seen Exana have a match like that before. So she's obviously yeah. bringing it out of people. Yeah, she even had a good match with like Alicia Fox like two weeks ago. It's like Ugh. hallelujah. It's about time we got a good diva. Thank God for that. Other than AJ. Because one diva cannot carry an entire fucking division, we've learned. Yeah, that's not a thing. Speaking of great divas, it's Batista taking a break. (laughs) Uh, It would appear that Batista is taking some time off after Extreme Rules, as he is not advertised for any shows past that date, including the post-Raw pay-per-view. No, you idiot. The (laughs) post-pay-per-view Raw. (laughs) I'm so tired. Evolution will be taking on the Shield at Extreme Rules. So... Is this a sign that they're going to lose? 
Uh, hopefully. Yeah, I mean, I don't see how it would make sense for, hey, we won, but one of our members is gone. Well, maybe like they doesn't... win, but they destroy Batista to get their heat back. <laughs> yeah, I don't like that idea. Because it's just like, then they won, and they're supposed to show up the next night and be like, oh, we won, but there's only two of us. And it's basically the authority all over again. It's like, ah. I think, like, if Evolution win, it's going to fucking ruin the shield. Not ruin. Buried. Because they lost it to the Wyatt. It depends Wyatt's how like... long they, the feud's supposed to last. Like, they could win in the end, but... Like, I don't see this feud lasting past Extreme Rules because of this Batista thing. Which is weird. Because he's got to go off and talk about a film where Vin Diesel's a tree or something. So it's like, <laughs> why why the fuck are we going to, like, I don't know. Allow, why the fuck would they think, oh, hey, Batista and Orton and Hunter are all going to win. Like, if he fucking pedigrees Roman Reigns, that's it. <laughs> just, just go. I just wonder where Triple H and the Authority storyline is going. Because Brian won. He's sort of the face of the company. Now they've got the Shield. If the Shield win, what exactly is Triple H? What is his role? He's just this authority that loses and doesn't do anything. And, and at which well, point... I mean, that was why, what Vince did. Yeah, but why, why, why hasn't the board got involved? And saw this the shit who? going on and was like, Triple H, you can't keep getting involved in Brian's shit and the Shield's shit. You, 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 you are abusing your power. What the fuck are you doing? Yeah, what happened to Vince Stop. coming back and being the big sort of, you know, yeah. putting everything back on the straight and narrow? Maybe that'll be after Extreme Rules. Like, maybe they lose to the Shield, and then he comes out the next night with Orton, and he's like, we're not done, I'm going to fucking get as many people as I can, we're going to fucking blah, 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 blah. And then Vince and Shane, or I don't know, whatever, they come out and they're like, hey, the board says you're fucking stupid, go away. Something like that. Your your promo does not sound PG at all. Well, you know, I'm, yeah, I'm fucking this, yeah, fucking, 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 fucking. Like, okay, uh, yeah. If you were in a crave meeting, it'd be like Vince is like, so what are we gonna do now? Okay, Carline, go. Well, fucking, 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 <laughs> fucking. Like, uh, and it's like, no. <laughs> it's not That's even like a joke to that. It's just him going no. Yeah, uh, it's just him. He's got no. Have you guys listened to the Steve Austin podcast with Paul Heyman? Yes. Oh my oh, god, I want brilliant. to. <laughs> the story of Vince McMahon not even letting himself sneeze. Oh, like he gets god. angry at his own sneezing. There is no sneezing, There is no bro. sneezing. <laughs> I'm Vince McMahon! Could you imagine no working for him? Oh god. Like, that's, that's insane. Like... I need to listen to that now, holy shit. <laughs> there is no sneezing. What a dickhead! <laughs> sneezing, you fucking moron. Sneezing is not best for business. <laughs> it's me. This is a sneeze. WrestleMania 31. Like no, that's <laughs> that's not gonna happen. It's a triple threat with Vince, a sneeze, and God. <laughs> yeah, he faced God <laughs> and won. <laughs> 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 Um, but anyway, this Batista shield thing, I just, there's no way they haven't planned for this, right? Like, this isn't just coming out of nowhere. So I don't know what they're doing, but if it ends with Evolution winning at Extreme Rules, I just don't see how that's going to work out. Like, it's not going to ruin the shield, but it's not going to be interesting. Because I, I heard the rumor was it was Hunter against Roman Reigns at SummerSlam. Wow. How the fuck okay. did we get there from here? I don't get it. I, ugh, I don't know. And then maybe maybe just Ric Flair remember. returns and costs them the match. Oh, don't say that, because that's going to happen. <laughs> I don't think it will. They're a bit too worried these days that Ric Flair's just going to cry on camera. <laughs> He's going to show up drunk, and you know the thing where he, like, pretends to... Well, not pretends. He falls forward on purpose. He's going to do it completely, like, just out of being drunk. One day he's going to do that. He's not going to get back up. 
Yeah, people, he, he'll do that, and it'll be a serious incident. Like, he needs medical attention right away. And people are like, ha, 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 that's hilarious, ha, 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 Rick? Rick? <laughs> they did that in WCW. They, they made him have a heart attack in the middle of the ring. Then they sent him to a mental home, and he was going around in a wheelchair going, woo, woo. <laughs> Well, that's what happens when companies are about to die. So yeah, they sent Sam Shaw's going to a mental home, isn't he? So yeah. Uh... Oh what? Shit. Well, that means TNA are on their way out. Yeah, the loser has to go to a mental home. So you know Vince what? Russo's back. Oh my god! What? It's oh, a, it's who's he fighting? Mr. Anderson. It's a committed match or a something like a you go in a mental hospital match. Can't go to a mental hospital if you're not actually insane. You, this isn't something you win or lose. If you lose, you got no. That's not no. That's like <laughs> going, oh hey, you lose, you go to a hospital, but I'm not injured or hurt. Well, fuck it, just go anyway. What? It's like, it's like I was watching um on the network. I was watching the countdown show, and they have one for like most infamous gimmicks, and they were talking about the Mountie. And how he had a match with Big Boss Man where the loser had to go to jail. <laughs> that doesn't make sense. Do some hard time. No, <laughs> that ridiculous. doesn't make sense. Like, loser <laughs> leaves the company. Makes sense. Someone, the fucking the loser isn't a champion. Makes sense. I, 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 I think we've given... The <laughs> loser isn't a champion. We're giving it too much credit. This is an industry that has... Buried alive matches and casket matches. And where no one ever dies. And there's a million different owners of the company, like, every week. <laughs> I can just imagine, like, a bunch of prisoners sitting in a, like, a jail cell. And they're just talking to each other, like, what are you here for? I murdered someone. What are you here for? I fucking loitered. What are you here for? I lost a wrestling match. Then again, we say it's unrealistic, but if you read a new interview with the coach, Jonathan Coachman, they played a rib on him backstage where yeah. Vince McMahon literally had police involved in the rib. They arrested him, drove him 20 minutes up the road. <laughs> and it was a joke. That was the best thing I've ever read, by the way. It was fantastic. If they did that to me, I would have been quivering in a corner. <laughs> There's no way I would have ever worked for him after that. I don't know how... Like, what a horrible environment. It's so bad. I, that is the... But if the police are willing to do that for Vince McMahon, maybe they're willing to, you know, you know what? go to jail. We're going to get, get coach arrested for a laugh. <laughs> what a dick. <laughs> uh, I can imagine, like, the police don't want to play along. And it's like, no, we're not going to. That's too much. And he's like, you will, or you're fired. I don't you're fired. <laughs> I don't work for you. you fucking asshole. I'll get you fired. I'll hire uh, you, then fire you again. Like, no. <laughs> Piss my ass. Like, no, Vince. <laughs> No. Fuck. <laughs> Big in things that just no, don't do it. Ring of Honor ditches I pay per view for the real thing. Ring this of Honor no, debuts on I pay per view with Best in the World 2014 on Sunday, June 22nd, from the Nashville Fairgrounds, the old home of TNA, by the way. <laughs> and blah blah blah. It's gonna cost twenty four ninety five in standard definition. Hmm. It seems. It seems like. I don't know, like, isn't this going the wrong way? Like, WWE are the giant company, and they're the one using the internet, but Ring of Honor are now going backwards and making people pay that much for a normal pay-per-view. I know they got iPay-per-view all wrong and no one trusts it anymore, but aren't we a bit beyond that for a small company to just be on pay-per-view? Like, how are they going to sell that? I don't know, but, I mean... Like you said, iPay-Per-View is not really a valid option anymore because people fucked it up so bad. So I guess this is like their only other choice. It's not like they're going to come out with the Ring of Honor network anytime soon. So the, the thing is, it's like it's completely going backwards, but not just that. It's it's like if you can't get fucking iPay-Per-View, right? What makes you think you can do TV right? What makes them think this? And th that amount of money 
No. I don't understand why they don't just record the show, upload it on YouTube the next day, and charge a fiver. You can you can put YouTube videos behind a paywall now. You don't have to have the pay per view exactly live. As long as it's the next day, people can avoid the spoilers for a few hours. Yeah, I mean, you don't have to do it the next day. You can put it up like an hour later or something. I mean, when the event finishes. Like, I don't understand why they, they think not using the internet is a good idea. Using the internet is a good idea. They should have been the company that used it years ago and mastered it and... Like, I don't understand why iPay-Per-View is such a failure for all these companies. It's not. It's just Ring of Honor. Like, all the other small... Like, I was watching a 2CW event. I don't know what the fuck, where the fuck they even based. I don't even know what they are. They put it on for free. And I watched it. And it was in this small, shitty, ramsack place. But their fucking feed worked perfectly. These people are owned... Ring of Honor are owned... By a broadcasting company. Why in the love of wank can they not put an iPad for you together? Because they're shit and don't know what the fuck they're doing. Well, maybe that's part of the thing because they're owned by a television broadcasting company. Maybe that company just doesn't know how the internet fucking works. So they're going to what they know. But that's... I have that's read, though, that... Because WWE are not on normal pay-per-view anymore, or at least have been dropped by... Is it DirecTV? I'm not really sure how it all works over there. Yeah. But and Dish, I think. They're looking for something to replace WWE, and I guess they're thinking, oh, wrestling, mm, we'll just use them instead, not really realising that WWE only sold that many pay-per-views because they're just a marketing juggernaut. You can't just replace it. That it's WWE, and even if fans have some spare money, they're not going to trust you. They, no, you fucked it up once, you fucked it up twice, you fucked up a million times. No one is going to trust you. Even The words pay-per-view are not good with your company right now, and it never, it probably never will be. So just don't fucking do this. Just... Don't use a shitty provider like Go Fight Live and don't try to do it yourself. Just, I don't know, do it live off YouTube or something. I don't fucking know. Just don't fucking do this. You're well, going here's the backwards, thing. damn it. it. Here's the thing, though. If, like, this live pay per view is their last chance. If it works, they could have a future in it. If it does not, they're fucked. It's, it's, the, the future is on demand. The future is streaming. Like, you could, if you wanted a TV pay per view, you could have done it online and get people to watch on their smart TVs now or whatever. You can hook up a fucking laptop to a fucking TV. Like, there's so many fucking things you could do. Don't do this. This is like, who the, f who the fuck? No one knows who's on your fucking roster anymore. No one knows anything about your company because it. You claim that it's on so many networks, but fucking no one knows what fucking time it's on. Like, just stop. Do the internet thing. Do the internet thing. They get it right. Well, Damn it. I, I still think if, if this works, then they could redeem themselves to some extent. I, but it's so I, I think you'll get a certain amount of hardcore fans. They'll just buy anything they do. And, oh, it's on pay-per-view. Oh, I can get it on my telly. Oh, I'll do it. But it's not something that's going to take them to the next level. It's just something no. that's going to keep them treading water. And I don't know whether that's necessarily a bad thing. If they can, you know, uh, make a profit, then they're, they're a successful business. But it's not, it's not a game changer. I mean, no, definitely this, this, not. This press release doesn't even say what pay-per-view providers it's even on. So that's great. Well done. Congratulations. Yeah. Fucking idiots. Um, so, speaking <laughs> of things... Let's make Andy God. He'll, he'll fix everything. <laughs> that is the last thing you want to do. Roddy Piper uh, was in a shoot interview with KFA Commentaries who have released a trailer... For their new timeline, The History of WWE, 1984, with Roddy Piper. Uh, he claims uh, a lot of interesting things. And at the end, he seems to imply that when he was a young man, Pat Patterson may have made a pass at him. And in his words, 
it got awkward. And that's all. I've heard a lot about this trailer, and it's I'm interested weird. to watch it. That's uh, weird. The noise that just came out of my mouth. But to yeah, be yeah, fair, though, Piper, Piper's kind of... He's going down this strange road. Like He's just saying strange things a lot lately. <laughs> I don't know whether he's losing yeah. his marbles maybe a little bit i know th- th- there's always been accusations against pat patterson but you got to think of the time period the guy's an openly gay man i reckon back in the day that just wasn't do you know what i mean if he's if he's flirting in 1980 whatever that's going to be taken a bit differently than if he was doing it now people just were like yeah yeah fuck off pat <laughs> but that he... no, go up yeah, but there has been a lot of kind of accusations against him over the years. But when you look into them, it's kind of disgruntled wrestlers that have either been fired or, you know, just kind of looking for a paycheck kind of thing rather than any of it really, you know, there's no there's no evidence that he's ever been done anything illegal. But the concerning thing is, if you look at this trailer, like for the whole of the trailer up to that point, he seems coherent, not spaced out, he seems fine. But as soon as he talks about this, he just goes into, like, this weird fucking trance. Like, he's, I don't know, like, he's just having a fucking flashback. And he's having a <laughs> fucking episode or something. And he's just, like, the guy, the fucking interview is like, what do you mean, politically? And he's like, uh, no. Like, what are you- <laughs> What the fuck is happening? But they, they're on like Legends guarantee. House together. Um, and I watched the first episode. Oh, yeah. Did anybody watch that? I have I not seen it damn it. I watched the first episode and it was interesting, but there was no... Like, there was no purpose point. The episode didn't build to anything. It's just like, hi, we're Legends. We're Some of us are house. kind of alcoholics. <laughs> We say weird <laughs> shit. Here's Gary Busey, and let's do yoga. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what the fuck are they doing? Then Roddy Piper goes to sleep because he looks <laughs> fucked, and um, that, that's <laughs> that's about it. And hi- and Hillbilly Jim looks like a badass. <laughs> I well, I might have to check that out. Hopefully, we don't start a fucking show about it. But you know, but I, I uh, but I guess I, I mean I'd be interested to just see how piper is on this show as we as it goes forward see if he is yeah. just kind of losing it a bit <laughs> that was recorded be. years ago as well so fuck knows if he's completely mental now but someone has called rowdy piper out and that man is a guy who has something coming with me who injures himself for no reason kevin nash as he calls piper a deranged old fool on his new podcast, Rowdy Roddy Piper called Kevin Nash a liar and said that he didn't know how to work. Uh, he then recorded a match where he claimed that Nash was taking liberties, so backstage he threw him out of the dressing room. Nash and Sean Waltman, however, have claimed it was Nash who got the upper hand. Nash on Twitter said that Piper is a deranged old fool. He got bitch slapped to the floor. Hulk, Pack, Scott and Eric were in the room. Let it go, Rod. Podcast invite. That's such a weird way to end that. It's like, no, oh, he's crazy. He got bitch slapped. Everyone saw it. Let it go, man. Hey, you want me on your podcast? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Maybe it's a work. It's like, probably. And he's just really bad at hiding it. But this is the thing. Like, some of these old guys that are... They're given this new platform where they can just rant they're gonna start saying some shit that doesn't make sense or is wrong or (laughs) and people are gonna call them on it yeah uh, it's just like about this before the show started why does everyone have a fucking podcast yeah really it's like stone cold jericho uh jim ross apparently has one piper has one for christ's sake yes taz has one um, yeah, you could get up in the morning and think, I'm going to check out some podcasts, and you wouldn't be able to watch them all or listen to them all by the end of the day. 
Like I only, I the only other ones I listen to is Colt's one and Austin's one, and that's it. I don't even listen to Austin's one anymore. But I listen to Colt's. So annoying because like at the start, I'm like yeah, I'm so cold, Steve Austin, and you should try. D124, dude. It's like the greatest <laughs> game ever. Even if you don't like hunting, it's great. Also, try these pills that do stuff to your brain. I'm so what cold. Sorry, we've got to interrupt this with you, because I've got to tell you something about little shit that I don't know what it is myself. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> what blah, blah, is why this do I need voice you're doing? <laughs> what? What is that <laughs> voice? That is my Stone Cold voice. <laughs> it's, it's more like... Matt Stone Hardy. Cold, he had a stroke. <laughs> I know. I'm so cold, Steve Austin. That's the bottom line. That's so stupid. I can't do it. What the hell? <laughs> you should just do a I whole try- show of Andy impressions. I- yeah, really. Between that and Ghost Willow and the normal Willow. and well, the- Yeah, Andy, you've got to sing. Actually, I don't know. What was the bet? I don't know. But Andy, you've got to sing something in Lana's voice. When yeah. the fuck did this happen? I can't even remember, but that's Facebook what we decided. Chat. It was a Tinder bet, and it happened in the Facebook chat. What the fuck? No, I'm not. No, I'm not singing. I retired from singing on this show. What I do now is impressions, <laughs> like my Dixie impression. We got to keep Willow. No, we got to get rid of him. See, we. That's what I do now. Uh, deal with it. Career. Pro- Stop saying deal with it. <laughs> I've got to keep burping. Great, great. So let's just move on to fucking Global Force. Hooray! Global Force Wrestling is partnered with AAA in Mexico. Jeff Jarrett has announced that his Global Force Wrestling promotion will be partnering with AAA out of Mexico. Uh, This is particularly interesting because AAA themselves are embarking on a North American expansion. So does this just mean Global Force is going to be a bunch of luchadors? Oh, God, hopefully. I don't get it because their AAA are debuting on what's the American Hispanic channel? Is it oh. El, El Rey or I'm not entirely sure. There's some kind of fairly big channel that's I think geared towards the Hispanic market, but they're moving into America. They've got a new TV deal. They've got this big executive that's behind them, some Hollywood guy, I think. And why are they, why would they be partnering with another promotion that's also trying to get TV? And it doesn't really make sense. Like, uh-huh. I don't get it. Uh, it's just like... Uh, it's weird because, like, Global Force, when you think about that name, sounds like it should have a bunch of wrestlers from Mexico, it should have a bunch of wrestlers from Japan, a bunch of wrestlers from America, a bunch of British wrestlers, a bunch of this wrestlers, a bunch of that, from everywhere. That's what it sounds like it should be. So if that's what they're going for, I guess this is a step in that direction. Well, they still they're still not even really explain what they are, what they're doing. <laughs> it's just like we're the most interactive blah 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 blah. Let's media. just throw out a load of corporate shit in your face and see what people say. Like, no, Jeff, you gotta tell me what you're doing. When are you gonna fucking think about actually starting this thing? What is it going to be? Because it's like, it's going to be more reality TV based. Oh, no way it is wrestling based. Oh, wait, look at my wife's boobs. Like, no. Like, <laughs> All I'm right, gonna... I'm going to steal some glasses. <laughs> <laughs> and like, threaten I'm not to give get... them back. Like, no, right? I don't get what the fuck is the point of this well, company if you don't explain what the fuck is oh, happening. Right, and Hermie Sadler's on board, the NASCAR <laughs> guy that sometimes oh. appears on TNA for no reason. God oh my! And apparently, like, uh, he's 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 uh, promoting the, the the company on his vehicle, and he's actually a member of the promotion's board. Whatever that means, because they're not a corporation. <laughs> don't have a promotion, Jeff. It's just a logo. You don't have anything. Unless you. I can just imagine him like he he's got the logo all set up, and he's like, "Oh, now we need a board of whatever." So he gets in his little fucking tree house and he invites Hermie Sadler over and it's just like, okay, this is, this is the, this is the board. Let's have a meeting. Can you put our logo on your NASCAR car, please? Yeah. Why do they always like wrestling always does this every couple of years. They'll have 
you know, the NWO car, the, the, the TNA car, that it's like, is that really getting you some more viewers? Just some guy in a NASCAR people, race. It, it, people that it, watch NASCAR probably watch wrestling anyway. It, but it's they like, probably it's like only that old stereotype, though. It's like, oh, it's just dumb rednecks. Well, what do dumb rednecks also do? They watch NASCAR. What a good cross promotion. It's like, oh. Mm. But it's like he does these videos as well where he calls them the journey. And the <laughs> idea is, he's like, well, on Monday, I took a shit. <laughs> on Tuesday, I drank some coffee. On uh, Wednesday, you're not actually doing anything. It's like we're seeing, we're seeing networks and talent, and all the pictures that you see is him on a plane, <laughs> drinking coffee, and walking down the street. The rest is stock <laughs> footage of a, of cities for some reason, and he's not doing anything new. He's not. I don't. I think yeah. he's, he's not even. He's strong. not even explained what it is in any of these videos. It's just how can I confuse people? This isn't the point of starting up. A, might just start up a business and be like, "Well, this is what it's going to be." Oh, is it going to be like yeah. this? But he went into the dragon's den. He went into the dragon's den. It's like, right, give us your pitch. Well, it's the most interactive social media thing. I'm on a journey now. I'm drinking coffee. Yeah. <laughs> It's like, sorry, what are you Wrestling. doing? <laughs> yeah. NASCAR's involved somehow. We've got Hermie on my board. Dragons. I'm here is... today for an investment of a million pounds for my business, Global Force Wrestling. What Global Force Wrestling is, is the most interactive, <laughs> reality TV-based wrestling promotion with Hermie Sadler on my <laughs> Any questions? Yeah. What the fuck do you do again? What we do have you hashtags. We've got hashtags. Yeah. All they have is hashtags, and they're selling 8 by 10s <laughs> photos of Karen and Jeff Jarrett. That's <laughs> literally all it is. They have nothing. And I don't care if he's traveling the world, taking shits in toilets in airports around the world. I don't give a fuck. No, he did do something. He took some photos with TNA talent without their permission. To make it look like <laughs> they were coming to Global Force. He has nothing. There is nothing there. He's just... This is just fucking carny wrestling bullshit. Just like, oh, this is a wrestling company. No, it's not. You haven't even done one show. You haven't signed anyone. You haven't announced anything. Besides from some dickhead who was watching... Who was, it was a reality-based TV show with fat people losing weight. <laughs> is now on your thing. And a NASCAR driver's doing it. What have you learned, Jeff? Don't bring in <laughs> dickheads from other things. And what have you done? Brought in a guy who's in a car that goes round and round all the fucking time. And a guy that watched fat people run around. <laughs> You know what it is? The reason every wrestling promotion keeps doing this, it all goes back to Mike Tyson, pretty much. Oh, God. Because that so worked, and then everyone said, we can get any celebrity from any sports type of world, or not. We could get uh, freaking, what's his name from Price is Right, who I'm forgetting right now. <laughs> we'll get the guy from NSYNC that, no, <laughs> that wasn't <laughs> even popular 10 years ago. Kevin Federline? Uh... And we'll just get them and they'll make our wrestling promotion popular because they're popular-ish. But why? But I, I want to hear more about, wait, he took pictures with TNA wrestlers without their permission? Basically, at WrestleCon over WrestleMania weekend, he was going around taking photos with as many people as he could. And apparently, TNA got annoyed because he basically took photos with their talent and made it look like, hey, they might be signing. It's like, no, they're That's with our company. <laughs> When you said that, though, the first thing I pictured was, like, Karen has the camera, and he goes up behind Samoa Joe. <laughs> Just got photo his... bombs people. <laughs> yeah. Feel the force. <laughs> like, Joe's having a conversation with, like, Magnus, and, like, his back's to the camera, and Jeff just goes up to him, gives the double thumbs up, Karen takes a picture, and then once the flash goes off, Joe turns around and is like, Jeff, what the fuck are you doing? Get out of here. It's like, then, guitar. Then they, you know, they just, like, join the force all over the fucking thing. Hashtag join the force and the logo is just everywhere. And it's like, look, Snow Joe is coming to GFW. I'm Jeff Jarrett. Bye. Well, smash a guitar over their head. No. What the fuck was that? I don't know. I'm trying to do his theme. It's <laughs> stupid. It has nothing. It will be nothing. 
I hope I'm wrong. I honestly hope to God I'm wrong. But right now, they have a shit logo, a shit website, which actually, according to my antivirus, I should use caution using, because it's full <laughs> of viruses, apparently. So congratulations, <laughs> Jeff, you dick. And they have no roster, except for Karen Jarrett. Oh, but they have 500 Jeff. people in a database, which... It just means there's he 500 wrestlers they're interested in. About. No, he doesn't have anything. That's it just means like, hey, out of 500 people in the world, we might sign some of them. Right. <laughs> Do you? I might take a shit out of this. Who cares? <laughs> we have nothing. Uh, I'd like to see them like out of nowhere become the most popular wrestling promotion of all time, put I WWE know. out of business. Like I know, let, let's start a so. new bit. If GFW becomes something worth watching, Andy has to... Hmm. What does Andy have to do? He has to sing. No singing. No singing. <laughs> I don't want to sing. Uh... Brilliant, this is great reality. I'm moving on. Yeah, I can't think of anything. Good news, we'll Jake something. the Snake Roberts. WWE Hall of Famer Jake Roberts revealed on Twitter that he just needs one more surgery, but all the signs show that he is cancer-free. He says on Twitter, Indeed, cancer-free and sober one day at a time. Happy Easter and God bless all. So there you go. Yay. Yeah, I just man. like how he has to remind people, like, I'm not an alcoholic anymore. It's like, hey, cancer's gone, also sober. Yeah. Oh, do yoga. Everyone do yoga. <laughs> Please. Uh, I mean, good. I'm glad that he's not got cancer anymore. I don't know how you get cancer off the knee. That's a strange yeah, I've never heard of that one. Wait, where maybe, did he get it? Like the back of his knee. Like maybe something to do with just rolling around on rings, dirty mats or something. Uh, but yeah, good. Good job, Jake. I just, uh, I just like want to talk about TNA. <laughs> Why? Because I just, I just like looked at the fucking roster. <laughs> Come on, give us, give us a rundown. Give us a rundown of TNA's epic He's roster. Done it before, but why is Abyss still champion? Champion of what? The television. Champion of the television. <laughs> Literally, he's, he's champion. Of, that's why I hate that belt. You can't be champion of a television. No. That doesn't make sense. He's still television champion. The belt has not fucking been defended ever. You, do you think that a television championship should, I don't know, be on television? Oh. I always thought the point of a television championship was that you almost defend it every episode on TV. Like, that would be the point of it, no? Ric Flair is still on this fucking roster page. What? <laughs> I am not lying. What in the fuck is wrong? Oh, no. Yeah, okay. It's under alumni. Okay, my bad. Oh. I was going to well, say... They have, but... they have to do their alumni page because WWE now has alumni pages. Oh, okay. Right. <laughs> Why? I bet their alumni page is bigger than their Oh, fucking... we've never done their alumni page. Should we do that? This is going to be fun. AJ Styles. <laughs> this is depressing, really, isn't it? <laughs> Alex Shelley. Amazing Red. Brian Kendrick. Brock Hogan. Carlo <laughs> Chavo Guerrero. Christian York. Because he has such an impact on TNA. He wasn't Chris that Lynch. bad, and they just let him go. We're going to give you a main event. We're going to put you in the X Division. This no, is gonna the leave. worst. Crimson's on it. Doc's on it. Desmond Wood. I forgot about Crimson. <laughs> Don West is on it. Yes. Bring back Don West. West. Generation Me. Jay, Bra <laughs> Jay Bradley is on this fucking thing, by the way. Oh Who God. is Jay Bradley? Wasn't he in Aces and Eights? No, he was the gut check guy that is kind of like their Randy Orton. Wow, that's stupid. If that makes any sense. <laughs> right, okay. You know, this person has had such a such an enormous impact on TNA wrestling history. They were the greatest of wrestlers to ever step foot in a TNA ring. That person 
was obviously Rosita. What? <laughs> who the fuck is Rosita? Wait, wait, wait. Wasn't she the one who, like, would always come to the ring with fucking... What were they? Uh, uh, LAX. The Mexican or, tag team. Yeah, LAX? Yeah. No! Like nope. She apparently teamed up with her cousin, Sarita. Yeah, they were with LAX. No, they were with Mexican America. Oh, that was just what LAX version were? 2. God, this company's dumb. <laughs> when they got I know how, you know how Russo's back, by the way. Because... Fucking the beautiful people have come back for no reason. Like, literally, I don't understand why. Weren't the beautiful people, like, insanely over? I think that's the one good decision they've made lately. Yeah. Yeah, okay, I can't complain about that. I really can't complain about that. (laughs) But we've got Christy Hemi on the creative team, and now all of a sudden, Austin Aries is, like, off television. (laughs) (laughs) I knew that was going to happen. Rub your balls in my face? Well, you're not going to be on TV no more. And then she does a storyline where, like, men are stalking her and she gets them put in mental homes. So, Jesus. Is that all their alumni? Uh, well, that's not all their alumni. These are, I'm just picking up the ones that are, like, the, the worst of the worst. Because it's like, <laughs> I have no fucking clue who half of these fucking people are. Do they have all of them? Like, Grandmaster Sexe and Viscera? No, it's and weird. I'll give Scott you the link. I don't... <laughs> I don't understand half the people on this fucking thing. Like, there's no, there's no actual reason for half them being there. Like, I got, they've got Lady Tapper for God's sake. Ugh. She had tall. That's all she had. That's even, so they've even got, they've got uh, Stevie Richards. Doctor Stevie. That's just all he did. Dreadlocks, Matt Hardy. That that went down well. Orlando Jordan, let's scream, scream, let's cream on live television and then email gay rights magazines as if I'm going to be the new face of those magazines. Um, I, I understand oh, there's having, having people like AJ Why Styles did they get rid of Taylor Hendricks? They, <laughs> apparently Dixie Carter called her fat. It's like, she's not fat. Taylor Hendricks, you're so fat. What the, you're so hot. What the fuck? I just realized I got rid of Winter and Terra. <laughs> this is What this, the fuck? This company This company. That's just the most random alumni page because there's so many other people. Yeah, Sean Waltman, like, Scott Hall, Orlando Jordan. I can, Rhino. I can I can understand sticking a bunch of legends on there because it makes your company seem important. Uh why is Christian Cage not on this list? What I want to know is why did they let go Alex Shelley, Amazing Red, Brian Kendrick, <laughs> Doug Williams, <laughs> The Pope, um, Homicide? Let's go on this list. Jay Lethal, Joey Ryan, <laughs> even what? Matt Morgan. Yeah. This is depressing. I'm looking at this. is on. This is making me sad. Shark Boy. At least he was over and it was fun. <laughs> Shark Boy. Tracy Brooks does Playboy. Then they release her. Yeah. Yeah, she wasn't even. She was on like the website one. You didn't even feature in, like a <laughs> magazine or anything. What the fuck's the point? They don't have our truth on here. <laughs> but no, they don't have their first ever champion on here. They've even got Jeff Jarrett on this fucking thing, and he's still a new company. Ever... Fuck shake. But they've got Raven. <laughs> yeah, great. Of course, we've got to keep Raven. What about me? Well, you're there. <laughs> they have Fat Hardy. That's, insane. That's All the such pictures an insane. Of Jeff Jarrett, by the way, are when he had like his weird MMA gimmick. What? Ugh. He had an he had MMA the... gimmick? Yeah, he, we, he trained to be an MMA fighter to try and face Kurt Angle. You not remember that? Oh god, that's what? that's wrong in so many ways. <laughs> he, he tried. He Wrestling tried. is oh fake god. because I'm going to train to be a real fighter. <laughs> then, oh, and basically, no. he just stuck kids in arm bars and was like, I am a fighter now. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only good thing Jeff Jarrett ever did. Why does he have an ankle lock on Samoa Joe? Just because stop it. Because he's doing it because he's feuding against Kurt. I think. Oh my god, that's insane. Oh, they're gonna be. Their alumni page is better than their fucking roster page. 
It's 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 sad. It's so. Oh sad. my god. Zima Ion's not even DJ Zima Ion anymore. Now he's just DJ Z. Well, their, what is, what their roster, Kelsey? their active roster, they have Why? nobody. TNA yeah. has two active tag teams. The, <laughs> the Wolves and Bromans. So there's your uh, upcoming tag team title matches. Oh yep. my god. Do it's worse think- than the tag team division in WWE. Which is terrible. But at least they have tag teams. So for They're eternity just not now, for eternity, all you will see is the Wolves, which David Richards has the worst haircut in human fucking history, against the Pro Man. Basically, every crazy. division they have, they just have, like, one active... Like, all there is in the X Division is Tiger Uno and Sonata. And <laughs> Manic. That's about it. God, a division, that's a match. Yeah. They're Occasionally like, Manic will join in. They're doing like a best of five series as well with those two guys. <laughs> a best of until we can hire somebody else series. <laughs> <laughs> a best of forever. I'm so done with this company. Just end it for fuck's sake. No one's going to buy Why that. Why is fight. Joseph Park still on your active roster page? Kill the company, Colette. <laughs> Along with Mike Tanay and Jeremy Borash and Why Tash. are they on a roster page? And Hector Guerrero. Why are they on a roster page? Willie Urbina. <laughs> oh my god. Well, that'll they... fill one slot up. If <laughs> it just fluffs up their fucking roster page because they have no one. Does MVP wrestle? Half of the women are out having babies. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say something like, fucking knock me out, please. I don't want to work here anymore. Please. King Mo. King Mo. I thought he was with Mabel in like 1990. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's a fighter. That's, that's Mohamed Lawal. We did. Christy Hemi's still on their roster page. I give up. <laughs> I can't deal this with is, this. This is terrible. This is absolutely terrible. If this was an EWR game, whoever actually like does the mods is an idiot because it's like, Ah, their public image is 80 out of 100. No, I would put them on zero, and I would make them, like, because they're in the impact zone, I would make them lower than, like, fucking, t- like, Ring of Honor or something. <laughs> Just <laughs> backyard. Go all over the beginning. This this basically is a backyard promotion at this point. I just want to play EWR. So basically, <laughs> it's shit. Uh, and have Eric Young win my belt. And then when Eric Young wins the belt, we're going to have EC3 win the belt. And then that will be really good. No. That's what's best for business. And then, and then, and then what we'll do is we'll have Bobby Lashley win the belt. I'm like, stop. <laughs> and then Christy Hemi wins the belt. <laughs> and then Christy Hemi, because she'll be the only person left, will face <laughs> up against Mike Tanay for the TNA World Heavyweight title and Bound for Glory. Hector Guerrero wins the belt. <laughs> Gary, uh, who brushes up and uses a broom after the events are over, wins the TNA World Heavyweight title. <laughs> oh my fucking god! Oh my god! And then, and then, and then, just to finish it all off, when the company is literally about to die, Jeremy Borash will be like, "Goodbye, wrestling fans." Also, I'm the last TNA World Heavyweight Champion in history. Yeah! And that's it, that's it. <laughs> what makes me laugh is when fans online will comment on articles and they'll say, oh, Vince will buy TNA soon. Vince no. isn't buying TNA. Vince doesn't want to buy TNA. If TNA died tomorrow, why would he want TNA? A lot of these people are rejects from his company anyway. Yeah, they, they have nothing of any use. Like, they have no u- no purpose. Like, when WCW died, yes, he could acquire some talent and acquire their entire back catalogue, which stems all the way back from the NW fucking A, right? Why, in the love of wank, would he want reverse steel cage matches? Oh, no, actually, I've got the perfect... The, the only reason they would buy TNA's tape library is to do another Triple H video package and say, look, this is where all the people that I pedigreed went to. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is, yeah, it's just like, 
they, they can do a rise and fall type DVD, but it would just be the fall and the fall and the holy <laughs> fuck, this is plummeting to the earth. DVD. The fall and oh, we caught ourselves. Oh, we fell again. Oh, we caught ourselves. Oh, we fell again. Ugh. <laughs> it's just sad. Well, I think we should end it there. Yeah. It always um, ends with how bad TNA is, doesn't it? Yeah, don't watch that coming. Uh, so I have been Andy Kwok. I've been Carmen Antonelli. And I've been Keelan Balderson. And it's been a slow news week. Goodbye. Uh, 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 what, uh, the intro? Or, uh... <laughs> There's no intro. I've told you a hundred, I've told you a hundred times. I cannot play the song through Skype. Okay, I'll do. I'll do it myself. So, da 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 da